You did your maintenance for ship stability. Right. So the other day, I heard this captain telling me about his boat and how it had plenty of stability. He was telling me that he has been operating his boat for 30 years. It had plenty of stability the last time I checked. Why am I talking about stability concerns now? Well, boats, like everything else, have a best used by date. And boats can go bad. So today we're going to talk about stability decay. What drives stability decay? Well, mostly it comes down to weight growth. And what I mean by this, these are all the little changes that you make over the lifetime of your ship. Things like adding a new coat of paint, putting on a new wire on the winch, adding a crane, changing out the galley stove. These are all things that you don't really think about from a stability point of view, but they all have weight and they change. So let's break this down to just a few simple rules. Rule number one, all ships gain weight as they age. It just happens from all the little changes, even adding new coat of paint. Rule number two, those changes will usually happen in a way that will raise your center of gravity, your VCG, and that's going to in, in turn reduce your stability. Your ship will be less stable. Great example is adding a crane on the aft deck great thing to have, but a crane goes up high, and so that high weight is going to pull your center of gravity up. Another great example would be repowering. You're going to put a new engine in your ship. Another wonderful thing, but that engine, the new engine is going to be lighter than the old one, usually, which now means that you've taken weight away from the bottom of your ship. Again, you've lost weight at the bottom, that raises the center of gravity. And so the net effect is that all of these changes snowball over the life of your ship, and pretty soon you could have a case where a ship that started stable slowly, slowly becomes unstable over its lifetime. To the point where if you're talking a 30-year-old ship, you could actually have an unstable ship. One thing that people always tell me is that they haven't made any big changes to the ship. How could they have stability decay? Well, that's rule number three. Small changes add up. Okay, Things like swapping out that galley stove, you're thinking, well, that's not a big change. You're right, but you swapped out the galley stove. Then you put that new coat of paint on. Then you put that new nav unit up in the bridge and that new radar. Oh, and there's the new satellite dish. They all add up. And that's the kicker right there, is it's not about the big weight changes. It's about the small weight changes that nobody is thinking about. Okay, so at this point you might be thinking, this sounds really bad. What can I do to stop this? How can I control it? Well, you can't really stop it, but you can track it, and that will give you control over it. What you're going to basically do is track your stability decay and every so often you're going to recalibrate your vessel by doing a new stability test. We'll come back to that in a second. But how do you track this? Well, this is a great job for your port engineer. You're going to want to record your weight changes. Uh, every weight change, you're going to want to record the roughly what the item is, your best visual estimate of how much it weighs, yet you don't have to put this on a scale. You, know, you can just look at your galley stove and say, Nyeh. That was about 200 pounds, and roughly the location of where it was on the vessel. You know, frame number, deck, port, starboard side, that sort of thing. So, for example, like a galley stove, that would actually be entered on your weight spreadsheet. Is you would record the weight of the old stove going off, and the weight of the new stove coming on. And you might actually say, eh, they're both about 200 pounds. But you have to record both of them, and we'll come to that, that later. And what you're going to do when you're trying to decide what things do you actually record, what's worth tracking, go back to your stability booklet. Look up what your light chip weight is. Find out what is 0.2% of light chip weight. 0.2%. Write down whatever that number is of 0.2% of light chip. And anything above that weight, record that in your weight tracking spreadsheet. Once a year, 
have the captain get together with the port engineer. You're going to review any weight changes of that year on the ship, and then you're going to add up all those changes that you've been tracking over the years. And you're going to see what is the total weight change so far. And the way you have to think about this is that every weight change is risk for stability decay because it's risk of an unregistered, an untracked weight change. Remember how I said that you were going to estimate the galley weight? I'm going to say that galley stove is about 200 pounds. Well, it's the e that's the risky part because eventually you're not really sure how far you're off. And that's where the risk comes in, and that's what eventually leads to stability decay. And eventually how you eliminate that risk is eventually you'll hit a point we say it's too much risk, time to do a new stability test. Okay, so I have said the word stability test a couple times, and people always tell me stability tests are expensive. They want to put them off as long as they can. That's a fair point. So when do you actually need a stability test? This is a question for your flag state. So whatever country your ship is registered with will have rules that say how often you need to do stability tests. I like to use the U.S. Coast Guard because I'm most familiar with them. They published a marine technical note that actually very clearly says when you need to do a new stability test. They say, go on tracking your weight changes every year. Now if that aggregate weight change adds up to more than 2% of your light ship weight, then you need to do a stability test. The key word there was aggregate. Okay, now. What that means is that you can't cancel out weights. Take the example of a galley stove. If I took a 200 pound stove off and put another 200 pound stove back on, that is not a zero weight change. That's actually a 400 pound weight change. And the reason for that is that every weight change is an opportunity for more risk, more uncertainty about your total light chip weight. Because remember, once it goes on and gets bolted in, you're not going to track it anymore. Now, that's the catch there is every weight change, whether it's coming off or going on, adds to your uncertainty. And that all adds towards your 2% limit. The second trigger that can trigger a stability test is a shift in your center of gravity. Uh, this might be for a case where you're relocating, say, a crane from the aft deck to the fore deck. Uh, where basically you're not changing your weight much, but you've done something that really changes your longitudinal center of gravity. Uh, we care about that because that will change the trim of your boat. And what we say is that if your LCG shifts by 1% of your length, that will also trigger a new stability test. Okay, now I'm sure people out there are saying, wait a minute, they've read this rule. They know that there is a get out clause. They say, well, there's a case where I only have to do a deadweight survey. That's fair. That, there is a get out clause. See, the aggregate weight change is measuring your risk of uncertainty. Eventually, we hit the point where we say we hit our 2%. That's too much risk. We need to do a calibration. That calibration is either a deadweight survey or a stability test. I would tell people, plan for a stability test. The option to only do a deadweight survey is for a case where you've been really carefully tracking your weights and intentionally trying to keep that weight as a zero weight change. And the deadweight survey says that you can go out, do the deadweight survey under the Coast Guard rules, and if that deadweight survey shows a weight change of less than 1% from your last light ship weight, then you can stop there. Now, that's the net weight change, because dead weight survey is not uncertainty. That's a hard number. So if you actually kept your total ship weight good, you can stop at the dead weight survey. But most people are going to find out they're going to get driven to a stability test. So just plan for that from the start. And now to finish this all off, I really want to touch on why does stability decay matter, okay? Well, the reason is, is that light ship weight is a really big weight component. I mean, imagine this scenario. If I'm a shipper and I come and I tell you, hey, I've got some cargo I want you to put on your ship. It weighs just as much as your ship. 
but I don't really know where the center of gravity is. Might be five feet off the deck, might be 50 feet. And I'm not really sure how much it weighs, but about the same as your ship. But you can carry that, right? I don't know about you, but I would be worried about that. Your light ship weight is bigger than almost any other single piece of cargo that you're going to carry. But you're not tracking it, and it's changing, it's growing over the life of your ship. And that's the issue, is the weight can change without you noticing. So you have to assume that that weight will change, and you have to track it with that weight tracking spreadsheet. And every now and then you have to calibrate again with a new stability test. Because the point is, we want to find out about it back at the office, on paper. It's very safe to find out on paper. If you don't, then you're running a risk that you may have had your stability decay, and you might have an unstable ship and not know about it. And then the only time you're going to find out is when your ship capsizes in the worst situation. And that is never a time to find out that you have bad stability. We would much rather find out back at the office on paper where it's safe. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked it. Hey, did you know that there is a magic button down below that will let me know that you liked it? Click the like button and then I will make more videos for you.